because one thing is true, it also means that if you're not having children, sexual intimacy with your spouse should end. It is shocking to me, but some people think that if you're past your childbearing years, you should stop having marital intimacy with your spouse. Some even think that it's sinful. In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about sexual intimacy in a marriage, in a sacramental marriage, specifically for couples who were like me and my husband. I received a comment a few months ago and it just stuck in the back of my mind to the point where I decided I wanted to make a video about it. And it's based on the idea that Catholic couples feel like they're either pressured because of the pornographic nature of society that we live in or because they feel like specifically Catholic women feel pressured by their husbands to maintain this active sex life Otherwise, their husbands will be disappointed or in some way feel deprived and perhaps even go elsewhere if their wives aren't giving them what they need. This video is sponsored by PrayLatin.com. PrayLatin.com offers Latin prayer cards in various formats, making it easy to learn and share basic prayers in Latin. Some prayer cards even offer phonetic pronunciation guides to help with correct pronunciation of the sacred language. Let me preface this video by saying I'm aware that there are a lot of hurting Catholic couples out there who struggle with a variety of issues within their marriages. No marriage is perfect. My marriage is not perfect. I am gonna share with you in this video about a very delicate topic from my perspective as a Catholic wife based on the information that I have learned that Holy Mother Church teaches on this topic. I am fully aware that there is no way I could make a video to address each and every problem that you might be experiencing or talk about in this video. I'm sure that there's couples who battle with different types of infertility, couples that battle with illnesses and sick children and work schedules and what have you. I'm just sharing from my perspective of the, as a Catholic wife then I hope that it helps, but always rely on sacred scripture, the catechism, a traditional Catholic priest, and ladies, talk to your husbands about anything that I share here that maybe sparks a discussion to help you in your marriage. When I first read that comment, I was really shocked. I It never occurred to me, it wasn't on my radar as something that couples thought about or discussed or even struggled with. Maybe that was being naive on my part. The idea that couples at one point in time stopped being sexually intimate with their spouse because they were done having children really was heartbreaking to me that someone would have that, that feeling about such an integral part of a healthy Catholic marriage. When I read the comment, it made me feel like this woman was hurting and that was maybe the impetus of the comment that she wrote that she was needing to get something off of her chest and wanted to share it. And so it's not coming from a place of judgment of how she feels, that's how she feels. It's opposite of how I feel. And so I wanna share that with you in this video. And I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below and what your thoughts are on this topic of marital intimacy after having children. I decided I wanted to go a little bit deeper and see, well, what does Holy Mother Church actually teach on this topic? Having a healthy sex life is important. It was important to me as a young bride, and it's important to me now as a woman who is almost 50 years old. I'm sure that my husband is extremely happy that I still feel this way after all these years. We have gone through different phases in our marriage from being newlyweds to having young children to navigating life as a police family, to now being retired and having three girls who are finishing up college and we even have a grandchild. Prioritizing our relationship, our marriage, maintaining a healthy sex life has always been something that was very important to me and has always been important to my husband. It was never because I felt that I had to do anything that I didn't want to do. My husband has never pressured me in that area of our marriage. I knew that I didn't want to be my husband's roommate. I didn't want to grow apart from him and maintaining a close relationship with him so precious to me. And maintaining that throughout our marriage has been a priority, regardless of the season that we were in. Now, in doing my research, I wanted to see what does the Council of Trent say? And Trent says that there are three reasons or three ends to a marriage. First is having children. Well, we've had children. Of course, God can do a miracle. I'm sure it's an impossibility that I could still have a baby at almost 50 years old. And if it and if that were to happen, that would be a tremendous gift and blessing. And we would, of course, welcome that little one into our lives. But I think in reality, the chances of that happening are slim to none. The second reason for marriage is the desire for a family. 
to bring up your children to know, love, and serve the Lord. And the third reason was added because of the fall of our first parents. It's supposed to be an antidote to avoid the sin of lust. For the fear of fornication, says the apostle, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. And little after having recommended to married persons a temporary abstinence from the marriage debt to give themselves to prayer. He, and he adds to return together lest Satan tempts us. For nearly the first 2,000 years, it's like 19, 1950 years, Catholics knew this. They were taught this. There are two purposes to the marital act. First is to bring forth children. The second is to unite the husband and wife. The unitive aspect of sex is to bring forth children. The primary purpose. The Catechism of the Council of Trent puts that above the, the marital intimacy between a husband and wife is having children. Then it would follow that you should stop having a physically intimate relationship with your spouse, right? Not so fast. Jumping ahead a little bit to Pope Pius XI, he wrote an encyclical called Casti Canobi, and it's on marriage. So Pope Pius XI further reiterates what the Council of Trent said, that children are the priority, and then the intimacy of the couple is second. If you've never read the encyclical, Casta Kenobi, if I'm saying that right, you guys come for me when I say things wonky. I encourage you to do so. It's a beautiful teaching on how to live a good and holy Catholic marriage. I'll link it for you in the description box below. Pope Pius XI, he penned this encyclical in response for the rising demand of birth control, which continues to this day to be such a topic of discussion on why the church is still the only one who still holds that birth control is wrong. Do you realize that Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, felt that this encyclical from Pope Pius XI was a personal attack on her? Holy Mother Church teaches that every time a sacramentally married couple comes together and engages in this form of intimacy, we are physically restating our marriage vows and recommitting ourselves to all the promises that we made on our wedding day at the altar. The church has taught from the beginning of time that we were made for something outside of ourselves, namely the, our communion with God. Sex is made for something outside of our own enjoyment. It's to participate with God in bringing forth new life. This reality does not mean, it doesn't follow that because one thing is true, it also means that if you're not having children, sexual intimacy with your spouse should end. It does not mean that sex between a sacramentally married couple is only for procreation. This teaching has been reaffirmed both Casti Kenobi and again in Humana Vitae. Unity of spouses is another good that comes from sex within marriage. It's deeply intimate, as we all know, why it's reserved, set apart for the sacrament of marriage. John Paul II said his letter to families, all married life is a gift, but this becomes most evident when the spouses in giving themselves to each other in love, bring about the encounter which makes them one flesh. So back to St. Pius XI and Casti Kenobi reaffirms that periodic abstinence will happen within a marriage. We know that this happens. There's periods of time after you have a child where you're not intimate with your spouse. There's times when someone is sick or what have you. In paragraph 59, Pope Pius XI says in Casti Kenobi, and he says, nor are those considered an act against nature who are in the married state use their right in the proper manner, although on account of natural reasons, either of time or of certain defects, new life cannot be brought forth. Most of a woman's life, she is not fertile. She is not able to bring forth new life. The Lord in his goodness has such a small window when that miracle can happen. For in matrimony, as well as in the use of the matrimonial rights, there are also secondary ends such as one, mutual aid, two, cultivating of mutual love, three, the quieting of concupiscence, which husband and wife are not forbidden to consider so long as they are subordinated to the primary end and so long as intrin intrinsic nature of the act is preserved. Natural reasons of time equal infertile periods or certain defects after say menopause or natural infertility. For the language of primary ends, procreation and the education of children and the secondary ends, which are mutual aid, cultivating of mutual love and the quieting of concupiscence 
has undergone a legitimate development in doctrine. Pope Paul VI said, therefore marriage persists as a whole matter and communion of life, maintains its value and indissolubility, even when despite of an intense desire of the married couple to wanting to have children, offspring are lacking. Thus the importance within marriage, mutual love between the spouses endures even after the nest is empty, children have all left. My husband and I are a few years away of being official empty nesters. Last two daughters are in their second year of college. There is almost done with nursing school and our daughter has a beautiful family and our first grandchild. And our three daughters still live at home. The thing that has always been in my heart is I don't want to be my husband's roommate. I did it when I was a young bride and I surely don't want it now where we have more time now that my husband is retired from law enforcement to just be together. I didn't want to raise our four children together. And when the last one left and the door closed, I looked at my husband and looked at him like, who are you? Now what? In the second part of our lives together. And that doesn't just happen once you're empty nesters and now all of a sudden you're going to try to build this relationship back. I did not want the ties that bound my husband and I together forever to be only in our children, that that was the only thing that tied us together. So what we did then when we were a young couple and what we still do to this day is we prioritized our marriage over our children. It doesn't mean we ever neglected them and that they weren't cared for. They were never then or now the center of our family. This day, my husband and what he wants will always come before what our children want. I serve him in this way, not because he has ever said, I need you to serve me in this way, or made me feel like I was less than, or I needed to perform in some way to keep him happy and fulfilled. It's just the way that I show my love for him by serving him. I always make his plate at dinner. I like to pick up after him. And again, these are all acts of love and service. I get to do them for him, but they are what makes my heart happy. I try to make an effort to be the best Catholic wife I can be, and I get it wrong a lot. And I will share with you in the end of the video that I did where I share, you know, some big mistakes that I made as a Catholic wife. The core of who I am as a Catholic is a woman who is dedicated to her faith and her vocation, which I have spent half of my life being my husband's wife. Prioritizing intimacy with my husband did not end at my last pregnancy when I was 29 years old. I always desired my husband and that was then and it is now. So many of my weaknesses and faults I can see reflected back to me and my husband in our relationship. And in so many ways, he sanctifies me and I do the same for him. Just working together through our sacrament, falling and hurting and getting it wrong, but continuing to prioritize the Lord and our sacrament has always been an important part of our relationship. The wife I was when I was in my 20s and the wife that I am now on the brink of almost 50, in some ways is the same. In other ways, I barely recognize the woman that I was when I became my husband's wife. I love him and I desire him greatly. And maintaining an active, healthy sex life is something that is important to me. Building a relationship and sustaining a marriage in the different seasons of life is challenging. And it calls us to not be selfish. Being supportive as we continue to grow older of one another, how bodies change, health changes, faces change, more wrinkles come. I will tell you that my husband never neglects to make me feel like the most beautiful woman that he has ever seen. And I see the mirror, I know, I see the wrinkles and what have you, but he doesn't. And if he does, he never lets me feel like he does. And that is something that has been throughout our entire marriage. He always makes me feel like I'm the only woman in the room. And still to this day, we act a lot of times like newlyweds. You know, we're not inappropriate in any way, but we do make our kids feel uncomfortable, you know, dancing around the kitchen and my husband's always grabbing at me and doing, you know, cute things that he used to do when he was a younger man. And he still does them now. You know, he is in his mid fifties and he still very much desires me and I very much desire him. And I think that it's a beautiful part of our marriage that we have prioritized this and made it such an, an important part of our gift of ourselves to one another. In the description box of the video, I'm gonna share with you a few books that were helpful to me, to my husband, as we would do research into 
marriage and what we could do and couldn't do and what was appropriate. And I'm going to be making more videos on this topic of sexual intimacy in marriage Realizing that it is a delicate topic and in respect of my husband and myself and our sacrament and for you all who are watching, I don't want to, to share anything that would make anyone feel uncomfortable, but what I will be sharing would be teachings from the church. So I will be give, sharing more details in the future. And if, of course, if you have any questions that you'd like for me to address in one of these videos, you can always email me. And the email for my subscribers is hello at a Catholic wife .com. If you're not subscribed to my channel, you can just use my generic email address, which is a Catholic wife at gmail.com. These are some that have been very helpful to us in trying to navigate our own intimacy within our marriage and trying to stay in line with what Holy Mother Church requires of us. Up next, I'm going to share with you a video that shares some mistakes that I made as a Catholic wife. I will see you soon. Take care and God bless.